Hi, it's Dr. Beggs here from Malmesbury Science and I'm going to show you one of the A-level biology required practicals. This one is all about making up a dilution series of sucrose solutions and using it to incubate potato exploring osmosis. So what we're going to do first of all is I'm just going to label my boiling tubes so I know what concentrations I'm going to put in them. The concentrations you're going to be working with is 0, 0.2 molar, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, and obviously one molar. Now this time, in this experiment, we're actually working with concentrations. So we're working with molar solutions, we're not working with percentage concentrations. I've already made up my dilutions, but when you start to do this practical, you're going to have to make the dilutions yourself. You're just going to be given one molar sucrose solution, and you're going to be asked to dilute it using distilled water to make up the series that you're going to be working with. Now, anybody who's a chemist will be aware of the equation. M1, molarity 1, times volume 1, equals M2 times V2. M2 is the concentration you want. V2 is the volume of that concentration you want. So we're starting off with one molar sucrose solution. We want to know what volume, that's V1, we want to make up, say, 0.2. So the equation will be 0.2 times the volume we want. And in each case, you're asked to make up 20 centimetres cubed. So 0.2 times 20, divided now by the original concentration, which is 1, which means to make up 20 centimetres cubed of a 0.2 concentration, what I want is 0.2 times 20, divided by 1. I want 4 centimetres cubed of my concentrated solution made up to 20 centimetres cubed with distilled water. And your task is to do that calculation for each one of these. And you could work it out without going through the equation. But what if in an exam they were to give you a much harder dilution, perhaps starting off with 0.5 and wanting you to make up 23 mils of it or something silly like that? If you learn this equation, which is the same as what you'll be given in chemistry, then that will allow you to make up any dilution given any start concentration. So let's have a look at the experiment then. So we're starting off with a potato. It's pretty important that your potato is fresh. It hasn't been hanging around for very long. I could sort of ask you why that is. And you would say, of course, that as the potato dries out, the water content of the potato will be dropping. And so the concentration of the solute inside the potato will be going up. That's going to affect our results. It's a nice fresh potato. So your first job is that you are going to make six cores from the same potato. And that, of course, is something else that you need to think about. Why are you going to use the same potato for your experiment? So I'm going to make six cores with the cork borer. You need to just think about where you put the core for the cork borer so that you can actually get six. There's a trick for uh, working with the potatoes. If you have wet the cork borer before you make your cork, it will slide easier into your potato and it will also be much easier for you to push your cores out successfully. I'm pushing mine out with a pencil. Keep wetting your cork borer between cores, otherwise you'll have the problem that you will not be able to push these cores out. You don't want to be moving on to another potato because there's going to be natural variation in the water content of the potato. So if some of those cores came from a different potato, it's going to influence your results. So the next thing you're going to do is you're going to very carefully blot those dry to remove any excess water on the surface. Now you're probably going to be asked, and you may well be asked in an exam one day, why do you do that? You don't want excess water because the excess water will be present in varying amounts in your initial mass of your potatoes. So once you've removed your cores, your next thing you're going to use, using a scalpel, is to remove the skins. That's another question you might be asked. Why are you going to remove the skins? Because the skins of that potato are more or less waterproof. And you want to be able to have osmosis occurring throughout the potato piece. So for this experiment, you don't have to have exactly the same length of the potato cylinders, but it's not a bad idea to have them fairly uniform. 
so that your surface area of cells exposed remains roughly the same throughout. Before I take the mass of those, I'm just going to prepare myself a table. It is a very important skill that you are actually writing your data into the table that you are going to use for your analysis straight away. Not rough collection of numbers just written anywhere to start with and then written up tidily later. Produce yourself a tidy table. It's going to save you time and also it's going to save any confusion. So what are we recording here? Well, we have concentration of sucrose. That, of course, is in moles. We have initial mass, which, of course, will be in grams. We have final mass, which, of course, will be in grams. We have change in mass, which is in grams. And then we have percentage change, which you're going to calculate at the end. This idea of percentage change reoccurs in biology time and time again. By calculating a percentage change, you are able to compare different masses, different lengths, different concentrations, completely different experiments. If you don't calculate percentage change, then your results, your change in mass, apply only to that potato, only to that core. So let's get the masses of them. And as I weigh them, I'm going to put each one into its correct tube. So just check that I'm zeroed. And my first reading there is 2.77. 2.77 is going into zero. Next one, check it's zero. 2.76, that's going into 0 0.2. Next one, 2.83 into 0 0.4. The next one, 2.88 <laughs> going into 0 0.6. And the next one, 2.67 going into 0 0.8 and finally the last one 3.05 going into 1 and notice even though they came from the same potato and they're all the same length they're all slightly different masses if this became excessively wet while I was doing it from the potatoes or there was any dirt on this I'd have to wipe that that pan off and make sure that I tear the scale so I could start again so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my solutions. So without too much delay, because those will be drying out all of the time, I need to measure out my 20 centimetres cubed of each of my solution and get them topped up. For this part of this experiment, I'm just using a measuring cylinder, not using a graduated pipette. So I'm not being really precise about the volumes that I'm putting in. What matters here is the difference between the concentration of the solution that the potato is bathed in and the concentration of the solute inside the potato. As long as the potato is completely immersed in the solution, the results will be the same. So that's my last but one. And then just got the one molar to go. So the most concentrated solution is going into my measuring cylinder. Last. There we go. So now the entire thing, all of these can go simultaneously into the water bath and they're going to stay there for precisely 20 minutes. So let's start the clock on them and that will give me time to tidy up all my area, get ready for weighing the masses in 20 minutes time. OK, so my 20 minutes is up. I've removed my tubes from the water bath. Just need to get rid of the water. Um, you'd, of course, be able to do this with the sink. I'm just going to pour these off into here. Handling these tubes as little as possible, I'm going to put each tube on a paper towel next to its concentration. So I've labelled the paper towel as quick as I can. Just pour away the water and pop the tubes onto a paper towel. Now, as we were saying before we started, you do need to make sure that these are dry. And now especially more so because they've been in the water bath. Just need to make sure that we remove any excess water from the surface of the, the potato chips that could appear as an increase in mass. And in fact, we've really got to be very concerned about that because it wouldn't even be a consistent increase in mass. Each one would have a different amount of water on the surface and so the mass would be affected by a different amount each time. I'm just going to quickly but carefully re-weigh each one and 
I'm going to record this in my final mass. Now, because I labelled my paper towel, there's no worry. I'm not going to get confused with these. We've weighed the potatoes, we've got the final mass and the initial mass. We've calculated the change of mass, that's the final mass minus the initial mass, and we've calculated percentage change. So the percentage change for each one is the change in mass divided by the initial mass times 100. So now we just need to plot that data, and I've started doing the graph here, just need to finish it off. So what we're actually plotting is the sucrose concentration on the x-axis, because that's obviously what we changed, so sucrose con concentration in moles, and the percentage change in mass on the y-axis. And this time we are split in, for this type of graph, you're putting the x-axis across the centre where zero is, positive above, negative below. That's very important when you come to actually describe this graph later. Now, because this is biological data and you cannot predict with confidence any of the readings between the readings that you've actually measured, I'm just going to join these points of a straight line. But actually, this is pretty good data for this experiment. So you may be, feel more comfortable with a line of best fit, but biology, I tend to join the points of a straight line. So what we're really interested now is where does this line cross the x-axis? And it's crossing at 0.3 moles. At that point, there was no increase in mass and no decrease in mass. So that is the concentration of the solute inside the potato.